Jamaica, by all international metrics, is not a very big country. As the 36th smallest state in the world, Jamaica has a total land area of just 10,991 square kilometers, placing it right between Lebanon and the Gambia in global rank. Unsurprisingly, the size of Jamaica's road network is also quite small, at 22,121 kilometers in length, 73% of which is paved. Jamaica's landscape is mostly mountainous, and though there are flatter areas along the coast, many of the roads are narrow and winding. In addition, Jamaicans drive on the left side of the road, which is why you might be a little confused to find out that most trucks are imported from the US. American trucks were never made for the tight turns and slender roads which compose Jamaica's road network. Yet the truck drivers who call this island nation home have no option but to make do with what they've been given. The hurdle of not only driving a massive vehicle down small roads, but doing so while sitting on the wrong side of the cabin is an ever-present reality for the Jamaican truck driver. International brand trucks are by far the most popular truck type in Jamaica, though there are other American brands like Kenworth, Freightliner, Peterbilt, Mack, and Volvo which are common, a sizable percentage of which are on the older side. This is not to say that all trucks are American in origin, as trucks imported from Asia, many of which are from China, are becoming more common, but they're in no way preferred. The prevalence of American trucks in Jamaica can be explained through the physical geography and automotive restrictions, or lack thereof, which are present in the country. Jamaica's proximity to the US makes it easy to import American trucks, specifically those which no longer comply with United States emission standards. Jamaica has effectively no enforced emission standards, which which allows for older rigs to remain in motion, so long as they're cared for properly. There are so many beautifully maintained trucks I have seen online, and I have to say the average Jamaican truck is far more attractive than the average American, at least nowadays. There's a great Jamaican truck spotting channel which I'll link in the description if anyone's interested in seeing more of these. As I mentioned earlier, much of Jamaica is mountainous, especially on the eastern side, where Blue Mountain Peak, the highest point in the country, is. Steep grades are present across the nation though, as many roads cut through the bumpy central landscape. The power of these older American American trucks are greatly appreciated and can be fully utilized, not only useful while traveling uphill, but downhill as well. The sound of engine braking, also known as Jake braking, can be heard across the country, and is an essential tool for Jamaican truckers, especially for those hauling heavy. However, not all Jamaican trucking takes place on steep mountainous roads, as there are four main highways, known as A roads, which connect the more populated areas of the country to one another. These roads are in great condition, and are the preferred path for truck drivers tasked with longer distance deliveries, especially because they have many areas to turn off and take a break, get food, and take in the beautiful sights of Jamaica. There are also B roads which are smaller than A roads and vary in condition, though are very much drivable and are used to connect smaller communities to both each other and larger roads. Outside of A and B roads, conditions are not often ideal for driving as many rural roads lack maintenance and, as an unintended consequence of the country's high rate of paved roads, can be littered with potholes. The government is also in the process of building a system of freeways, in the American definition of the word, with controlled access only for cars and trucks though this project is in its infancy with only 33 kilometers being built so far. Driving in Kingston, the largest city in Jamaica, can pose many issues for full-size trucks, which has led to a rise in smaller box trucks, which are used to fill the gaps in the supply chain left by the 18-wheelers. These can be seen across the country, but are most common in and around the largest cities. Jamaican truck drivers avoid one of the major pitfalls which makes trucking a terrible job in most areas of the world, because the size of the nation means they're never too far from home. As I've mentioned in other videos, loneliness can be one of the hardest aspects of a career in truck driving, but in Jamaica, it takes less than eight hours to cross the nation, making it rare for truckers to be away from home for long. This is not to say that Jamaica lacks in long-distance drivers, as there are no legal restrictions on driving time, most hours being set by a driver's employer. In addition, there are a lot of owner-operators in the country, which are allowed to work as much as they want in accordance with how much money they'd like to earn. There is no minimum rate or wage for Jamaican truck drivers, which motivates many to work long hours or leave the country entirely, the latter of which I'll speak on later in the video. Jamaica's main economic economic sectors outside of tourism are agriculture, mining, manufacturing, and petroleum refining, among other things. All of these sectors require trucks in order to function properly, and considering the economic powerhouse that is the country's mining sector, many dump trucks can be seen transporting products to and from quarries. Trucking has become incredibly popular among Jamaican youth, who look to the job as an opportunity to both earn decent wages and to be able to drive a massive truck. Unfortunately, this has led to a small number of younger drivers getting into the career solely for the purpose of piloting a large engine, and 
unfortunately, this class of driver can be somewhat reckless, treating their trucks as one would a souped-up car. Since no special license is required for unarticulated trucks, this problem is mostly among smaller straight trucks or dump trucks. The tightness of Jamaican roads paired with lack of visibility due to seating position makes these activities extra dangerous, and the popularity of many Jamaican trucking videos online only adds fuel to this fire. Again, this is a small subset of drivers, which realistically are present in most countries. The vast majority of Jamaican truckers care about those around them on the road and do their best to ensure that everyone stays safe. However, the same cannot be said vice versa, as many Jamaican car drivers are either unaware or oblivious to the size of trucks and their limitations. Since two-lane roads are so common in the country, people frequently overtake trucks, and often in a somewhat dangerous manner, as proper space is not given to the drivers. Whether this stems from the way in which people are taught to drive or a symptom of the two-lane infrastructure, it is dangerous nonetheless and something truck drivers have to watch out for. There are many truck driving schools which have popped up on the island, helping people to learn how to operate trucks, gain knowledge of the industry, and work towards obtaining their articulated truck license. There is even a program which is sponsored by the military that helps young people to obtain their license while in the service of their country. Some Jamaican drivers choose to move abroad, mostly to the US, UK, and Canada, to further their driving careers as opportunities are better, roads are easier to drive, and the average income is much higher. These truckers often send remittances, a word used for money sent home to families, which has helped in part to fund the domestic trucking industry as this money is sometimes used to start up trucking companies in Jamaica. However, Jamaica is still facing a driver shortage due to the number of truck drivers who move abroad, which has led to many efforts to bolster the country's driving force. While there has been success in recruiting from abroad, there are also many domestic efforts to boost Jamaicans in the trucking industry. Of course, there will always be some drivers who choose to stay on the island, content to navigate the beautiful winding roads of their home until the day they retire. Thanks for watching, and let me know what kind of video you'd be interested in seeing next. If you're into Discord, we have one which I'll link in the description, but yeah, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.